My name is David Neville. I am an assistant professor of German and director of language learning technologies at Elon University. For the uh, last year or so, I have been working, um, developing a 3D digital game-based learning environment for teaching German as a second language. Um, I want to take a few minutes to show you what I've, uh, the work I've done so far on this, um, what I've developed so far, how I plan to use it in the classroom, and uh, where I intend to take it in the future. So all the models that you're seeing right here, with the exception of a few, well, like the tree here, for instance, and some of the, uh, the shrubbery, um, all of these models I've developed myself in Blender. Uh, they were textured in GIMP. Um, I, the game environment in which I imported them into is Unity 3D. Uh, Blender and GIMP are free and open source. Uh, Unity 3D has a free independent developer license. So um, a lot of the stuff we see here is, uh, can be very cheaply done. Uh, university professors, especially humanities professors, um, have a tight budget and um, need to do things uh, well to save money. Um, I thought I would take you right now on a tour of the town I've developed uh, so far in the game the imaginary town of Bad Oberdinkelheim in Germany. Um, the town is essentially what you see right here. I have a tower, a, uh, a medieval tower, an older medieval structure, early modern period, uh, exposed timber work that uh, serves as the uh, city museum. As we walk over here, I'll take a closer look at the city museum. We have a few exhibits here going on, the special exhibit on Bad Oberdinkelheim, 2,000 years, and of course the Romans had a presence up here as well, so we have a look at some of the coins that they use. Um, so, uh, and that's essentially basically it. Uh, it took me a couple months to develop this, and as you can see right here, there's, uh, well, there's a lot of room to grow. Uh, it's, a, it's a growing town, and in the future I plan to, if eventually get a whole pedestrian zone that will encompass the player in the game. So, um, but right now what I like to do is uh, actually test out the game. Uh, work on developing the game uh, over the, in fall semester, work with some students, uh, polish the interface, test the prototype, and then in the spring semester go live and run an experiment with some students to see um, exactly how does a 3D digital game-based learning environment, how does it um, help them learn? How can I use it in a instructional setting? Now my hypothesis is that uh, using digital game-based learning in specific ways uh, will be, will manifest an efficiency, an increased efficiency in instruction. Uh, for exactly, uh, or more precisely, that students will do better on the assessment, uh, and better in certain aspects of uh, on a test uh, subsequent to playing the game and studying the unit in the class. Uh, they will, uh, what they learn, uh, the knowledge that they learn, they will be able to retain it better, and that the transfer between classroom settings and the real world. Uh, the real world which this video game tries to emulate will be better. So exactly what do I plan to do with this game? Um, when students will will, will have a uh, unit of instruction uh, in class uh, for a couple of days, and what I'm thinking of doing it is something on uh, environmental protection, recycling uh, in Germany. Now students when they enter the game, they'll be inserted somewhere right around here. They'll be tasked specifically with uh, going to the city museum. So uh, in the game, or in the real world, we just walk over to the museum, open the door, buy the ticket, and gain entrance. However, for the sake of the game, what I'm thinking of doing is that they can't get in the door without getting a ticket to begin with. Uh, we have certain hours of operation from 10 o'clock to 6 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday and we have a clock on the tower. clock right now is permanently stuck at a few minutes after 4 but in the game 
it's going to be live and it's going to count down the about 16 or 17 minutes to 6 o'clock. So the students will need to get in to the city museum in a certain amount of time before they run out, before the clock runs out, and they're going to have to somehow figure out how to get a ticket. Now what I'm thinking of doing is uh, making connections between what we do in the class, how students will win the game, and how can we transfer this to a knowledge of a real world space in Germany. So they won't be able to get into the museum. Other attempts at maybe getting in the back door will have uh, uh, consequences that are undesirable. Um, so, but they'll see that there will be a lot of perhaps trash laying around, some bottles, some cans, some paper. Students will be able to pick this up and using online cues provided by the game will have to sort the trash out. So take the trash to the trash can, or walk on over here and sort the trash can, or uh, sort the glass out according to whether it's green, whether it's brown, or whether it's clear. And doing so successfully, uh, repeated actions, about five or six different objects that have to be sorted in a given amount of time will provide them a ticket to the museum. Uh, either they'll find one laying on the ground suddenly or someone else will say, gosh, you know, you've really done a good job helping to clean our town up. Uh, I want to reward you with a, uh, with a ticket to the museum. So the idea is, this is simply not a, a way to candy coat instruction. We're not just simply having fun playing video games when we could really should be learning something in class and studying or uh, studying out of the book and doing homework with pen and paper. Um, what I'm trying to do is to take the vocabulary, take the knowledge that we've learned in class, and apply it in a real world or, or an environment that emulates the real world or uh, closely resembles the real world. Uh, all of these models that I've developed here were actually based on photos of uh, objects in Germany. I've used a lot of the realia to sort of decorate it. Uh, we had a sticker there. Uh, we also have some graffiti tagging on the back of this sign right here. So this provides sort of a depth of experience. The students are able to actually apply what they learn in class in a simulated real world setting, make progress in this environment, and um, well, uh, move forward in the game. If they do well in the game, they, that means they've met certain instructional objectives. So I'm going to be testing this in spring semester. Um, and then based on what type of feedback I get, we'll work on an article and continue developing the game a little bit more. So anyway, this is the Digibon project.